Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the sequence and series. Today we will discuss about the second test for the infinite series named as nth partial sum sequence. Myself Dr. Gar. You can simply follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harish Gar for finding the various videos on the topic real analysis as well as infinite series. So what we have did uh, discuss in our last lecture that is nth term test for the divergence. This test is applicable to describe about the divergence nature of the series only what is the rule behind is that that is when you calculate the limit of this an if it is infinite and the limit is or the limit is non zero then we can say it's a divergence nature so this test is only applicable for the examining the divergence nature of the series however when you prove that the limit an is zero then this test that is a nth term test can't say anything about the convergence of the series for example if you think about here then this is my an then what is the limit of the an as n approaches infinity is 0 and similarly for here this is a 1 upon infinity 0 minus 0 is 0 so by using this nth term test this on these two example this test will never tell us about the convergence or the divergence of the nature so this shortcoming of this nth term test will be overcome in our next test piece. so therefore there is a need to study the another test out of that this we already covered in our last lecture now in this lecture we will cover about the nth partial sum sequence piece. so this test will tell us about the convergence as well as the divergence nature of the series both moreover it will also tell us about the sum of the series convergent that is uh, when this series will be convergent so this series is convergent to here so in any question when they are asking about the sum you have to apply this nth partial sum sequence what is the nth partial sum sequence corresponding to the this series here we can define the sequence s1 like of this s2 like of this and so on where sn is called as the nth partial sum and the corresponding sequence is called as the partial sum of the sequence so if you prove that this sn that is the sum of these finite terms if it if this sequence converges to the l then we can say the uh, series is also converges to the l and its sum is given to be as a l so this is a necessary condition for the infinite series convergent so once you have to prove that it's a convergent series then you can say this here i can write as infinite series which is nothing but my l the behavior of this infinite series directly dependent upon the nth partial sum sequence s n if the nth partial sum sequence is convergent so remember this is the sequence so if the nth partial sum sequence is convergent then the series is also convergent and so on for the other cases the whenever we are talking about the nth partial sum sequence we always look about the telescopic series what is the telescopic series whose any of the series whose nth term or the general term is represented in the form of the difference of the two consecutive series for example if you look about here you can see this is the n and this is the n plus one these are two consecutive series this is the n this is the n plus one these are two consecutive series again this is the two consecutive series i can write these terms as i can write this as 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1 and you can see both are my consecutive series so whenever there is a term related to the consecutive series you have to apply the nth partial sum sequence test you can see I can do this like a partial fraction you can do by, by partial fraction here you can do like this way and you can do like this way so clearly says that this and these are the consecutive term n and n plus 1 are consecutive term so when the nth partial sum sequence will be applicable when you have the two consecutive terms in the sequence so what are the steps are there I will describe the three step rule the first step is you have to write in the partial fraction like of this if you have the series of this form then you have to write in the partial fraction once you write the partial fraction then define the sn which is the sum of this and compute the limit if this l is my finite and the unique then we can say the series is convergent otherwise not so if you find this l is my finite and the unique then the series is convergent otherwise divergent so let's say describe the a to nine examples in this video so that you are able to understand more clearly what we can do let's say here so before applying the nth partial sum sequence test we will firstly check whether this sum can be solved with our last lecture that is a 
nth term test for the divergence. So here you can see find its sum. When you apply the nth term test for the divergence, sum can't be calculated. In order to find the sum of the series, you always look about the nth partial. Here, if you look about that, if you have the a n is my this, clearly says that a n will go to the zero. So what is the meaning of that? Once a n goes to the zero, it means nth term test for the divergence does not applicable. So we will apply for the nth partial series. So we have a n of this. We can write in terms of the partial fraction. Moreover, these two are the consecutive sums. So the nth partial sum sequence is applicable. How you can find the value of a and b? That's very simple. Look at that. If you take here as a zero, then means n is my zero. Substitute all this value of the n at here zero apart from this term. So it will give you a one. So that means the answer of a is my one. Similarly, for this case, when you take as a zero, the value of the n will be my minus one. So substitute the value of the n minus one apart from this term. That it will give you the answer as what is the answer of b is my minus of 1. So therefore, a is my 1, b is my minus 1. Now we can substitute the value here. What is the a1? So if you look about that, this is nothing but 1 minus 1 upon 2. What is the a2? It's a 1 upon 2 minus 1 over 3 and so on. Now you can see that 1 by 2 will be cancelled out, 1 by 3 will be cancelled out the next term and then so on. It will be cancelled out. The only term will be here. Now take the limit. Now you can see the limit will be, this goes to the zero. So the limit is a finite and unique. So therefore the nth partial sum sequence is convergent. So by using the nth partial sum, the series is also convergent and the sum is convergent to the one. <coughs> Look at the another example. So again, you can see this is the n and this is the n plus one. This is a nth partial, it's a telescopic form. So we can apply the nth partial. So let's firstly try for the nth term for the divergence. If you take as an infinity, so it's a infinity minus infinity, which is not be defined. So we can apply for the nth partial sequence. So since it's a conjective term, so it's a telescopic series. So we can define in terms of the, there is here, remember that there is no need to write in the partial fraction because it is already in the partial fraction. We can define here. So again, you can see a n and a n will be cancelled, 3 and 3 n will be cancelled, n will be cancelled out. The remaining term is my here. So take the limit as n approaches infinity, it will go to the minus of infinity, which is not a finite. So therefore, the sequence is my divergent. So once the sequence is divergent, so the by nth partial sum, the series is also divergent. Look at this one. Again, you can see these are my two consecutive terms also. You can see whenever n approaches infinity, this term, this term will goes to the zero. So it means by nth term of the divergence, this test will unable to tell us any convergence nature. So we can apply the nth partial sum sequence. So we can part find this. How you find the value of a? So that's a very simple. You can take them as a zero. So n will be my three by four. So substitute n is three by four apart apart from this term. So what is that? It will be my 4 by 4, that is a 1. How you find the value of b? You can take this part as a 0, n will be my minus 1 by 4. Now you can substitute all these values of the n in here, apart from 4n plus 1 term. So it will be my minus of 1. So a is my plus 1, b is my minus 1 is here. Define the nth partial sum sequence a1, a2 and an, substitute the value of the a1, a2 and so on. Again, you can see 1 by 5 will be cancelled out, 1 by 9 will be cancelled out, 1 by 4 and minus 3 will be cancelled out, it will be here. Take the limit as n approaches infinity, which is a unique and the finite, so we can say the sequence is convergent. Once the sequence is convergent, so by nth partial sum sequence, series is also convergent and the sum is convergent to the, the limit of this here. Look at this one. Uh, again, you can see this is the n plus 1, this is the n plus 2, both are my consecutive series. If you apply the nth term test, as n approaches infinity, it goes to the 0, minus it goes to the 0, so 0 minus 0 is 0. So it means nth term test for the divergence does not give any information. So now here is a telescopic form. 
already is in the form of the partial fraction so we can write in terms of here we can find the value of a1 a2 a3 and so on now you can see 1 by log n3 ln3 cancel out 1 by 4 will be cancel out so the first term and here is the last term will be cancel out here so therefore this is my take n approaches infinity so it will goes to the zero the answer is minus 1 by ln2 which is again a finite and unique so therefore sequence is my convergent one sequence is convergent so nth partial sum sequence series is also convergent and the sum is converges to the minus 1 by ln2 look about here again you can see this is the n and this is the n plus 1 it's again a nth and the two consecutive series if you apply the nth term for the divergence when you take as n is infinity so tan inverse infinity is nothing but my pi by 2 minus again it's a pi by 2 so pi by 2 minus pi by 2 is my 0 so therefore nth term test for the divergence does not give the information so we can apply the nth partial sum sequence we can find this series you can see this will be cancel out and here take as n approaches infinity you will get the answer as tan inverse 1 is pi by 4 tan inverse infinity is pi by 2 so which is a unique and the finite so therefore the sequence is convergent hence by the nth partial sum sequence series is also convergent and the convergence limit is my minus pi by 4 look about this one so now you have to check whether this portion is consecutive series or not so if you apply firstly nth partial nth term test for the divergence what is the limit when n approaches infinity so that means what what is your a n that will goes to the zero <coughs> here you can write 4 n square minus 1 in terms of this clearly sees that these are my two consecutive or numbers so therefore this in the form of the telescopic series we can apply the nth partial sum sequence but here you can see these are not in the form of the partial fraction so firstly you have to write in terms of partial fraction now remember that in this case you can't say that 2n minus 1 is 0 because it's a non-linear it's of the degree 2 so how you can solve the value of a b c d we can simply multiply them you can equate the coefficient of the n cube n square n and constant from these equations clearly says that from this first equation you will get a plus c is 0 and so on now here you can see b plus d is my 0 so if you substitute here so from the second a minus c is 0 that is a is equal to c if you substitute a is equal to c in my equation number 1 you will get a and c both as 0 once you get a and c both as a 0 you can substitute here you will get b minus d as a 10 again b plus d is my 0 so this is the one equation this is the second you can solve them you will get the answer as minus 5 and the plus 5 therefore you can substitute a b c and d here and this is my a n this is my partial fraction now once you get the partial fraction you can define the nth partial sum sequence and so on you can take the limit you will get as 5 which is a finite and the unique therefore the sequence is convergent by hence series is also convergent the sum will be converges to the 5 look at the next one are there again you have to check the convergent again you can see this is n and the n plus 1 both are my telescopic series you can find the nth partial sum sequence you can see it's my here take n approaches infinity you will get a unique and the finite number so it's a convergent sequence as well as the series again you can see this is 2 raised power 1 by n and this is the 1 by n plus 1 both are my consecutive series so again it's a telescopic series you can find its value and you can get this answer as here as n approaches infinity you can see this portion will goes to the zero so the limit is my plus half which is a finite and unique you will get the uh, as here <clears throat> this is the exercise for you you can try to solve it you can take the partial fraction you can take the partial fraction you can simply take ln minus of this you will get it yourself 
we will see the next lecture on how you can solve this convergence nature with the help of the geometric series T till then i hope you can like share and comment my these videos best of luck students happy learning